Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me as we take a look at the astrological energies from July 8th through July 15th. We are on the other side of the Capricorn lunar eclipse, which was a big releasing energy. There was a lot of energy stirred up in this eclipse. And what is happening is that we are in a deep cycle of letting go, completions, new realizations, and we're moving into some new energies in July that are supporting us in pacing ourselves. Throughout July, we have strong Cancer energies as the Sun and Mercury are in Cancer. Mercury is retrograde until this Sunday. Then we also have the three planets in Capricorn, all retrograde as well. Saturn has returned to Capricorn, and we still have Pluto and Jupiter traveling together in Capricorn. So there's this seesaw or balancing act that we're undergoing right now after this eclipse that's asking us to pace ourselves emotionally, physically, energetically, spiritually. The energies can feel like they've been quite big and quite emotional. I think that this past eclipse stirred up a lot of grief. It stirred up a lot of deeper emotions, kind of like when you stir up something from the bottom of the ocean and it just comes up and it's almost like you can't understand where it's coming from, what it means, what it's about. And there's been this deep stirring up at our emotional core of what is complete for us. But also I feel like there's a release point here about the ways our lives have changed permanently in 2020, how it's been a very different kind of year to say the least, but how it's brought up more into our self-awareness around what we really want in life, what the priorities are, what truly matters at the end of the day, when everything else is removed and cleared away, when you come back to the essence of who you are, there's some deeper understandings that are coming up as well. So there's this interesting cycle of things clearing out, perhaps feeling quite emotional, feeling like you need to cry and you don't know why. It just is something coming over you or moving through you. There can be a lot that needs to just flow out of us. And the best thing to do is to trust it, to trust it with grace, to trust the process, to trust the wisdom of your emotions and how you're feeling. Because I feel like, again, everything that's gotten stirred up is much deeper. There's a collective energy to it. There's a collective energy around what has shifted there's this sense of no going back. There's a sense of even the unknown and uncertainty. And yet we're balancing this with these strong Capricorn energies that want us to get our lives together or that want us to understand where we're going next or to have a sense of of clarity and purpose. And it could feel like you're in between. It could feel like you're in between parts of yourself and that it's okay right now, if that's what you're feeling or that's what you're experiencing, because there is this energy that's being cleared out and removed, but also allowing the space, allowing the space to just be in the present moment. And if you ever need assistance with calming down your energy or your mind and just being in the present moment, one thing you can always do is simply tune in to your heartbeat and how your heart beats reliably and in a beautiful rhythm. And when you focus on that heartbeat, whether that's putting your hand on your heartbeat or just feeling it in your body or putting uh, your fingers on your wrist to feel your pulse, there is something that you're tuning into at a universal frequency because your heartbeat is in rhythm with the universal heartbeat and it brings you into your body, into yourself, while also connecting you to the universal flows and the universal cycles of trust. So calming ourselves right now is important. Pacing ourselves is important. Not being too hard on ourselves or expecting ourselves to get everything sorted and figured out and known. It's a, it's a very interesting in-between energy here as we move through July. And the energies are going to stay this way 
for the next few weeks because the sun in Cancer is going to be meeting up through an opposition to all three planets in Capricorn. And that will actually happen over uh, the second half of this month. So I'm not going to talk about that too much in this week's show. I'll talk about it in next week's show. But just to give you a heads up, the ability to be clear in yourself without going too far into either side of the seesaw will be essential right now. And this can help with your self expectations of just going into what feels correct for you, what feels right for you without the force or the pressure to get it all done or move it all ahead when it's really not time. So July is a very interesting month. And uh, for those of you who are in my July 2020 Soul Growth webinar, you know, I talk about the energies of this month being very interesting. And there's this overarching theme uh, in your chart, especially around the balancing of the Cancer energies with the Capricorn energies. Now, over the next week, we're going to see Mercury station direct, and that will happen early on July 12th. And then Mercury is going to move forward and it's going to perhaps alleviate anything internally that's been circulating. And I'm getting that image of maybe feeling like you're in a a washing machine or that there's a washing machine within you and it's just cycling over and over and it's just churning and, and it's moving, but it's not going anywhere. Like there's no release point. I feel like this Mercury retrograde has been really tuning us into some of these deeper messages that we're supposed to understand. And I I do feel like it's related to um, the emotional cycles, that emotional washing machine, and even the collective grief that's being activated and cleared out. Uh, There's been a lot of clearing energy happening here. And I feel like what we're moving through in July is a higher perspective of your own priorities for the rest of 2020. And there's a lot that's still up in the air, a lot that's unknown, you know, a lot of things that aren't quite together yet. But this is a time to be moving through what has been stagnant or stuck in you that needs to be released and it needs to be emotionally released. So it's been a very big time and this can show up in so many ways, and it can, of course, depend on how you work with emotional energy yourself. One way to know this is to understand your moon sign, because your moon sign is your emotional world. It's how you feel things. It's how you respond and how you react. It's how you take in energy, feelings, thoughts into your personal world, your personal space. So your moon sign is where you really work with feelings, how you think, how you process, how you connect, how you understand yourself in this way. And with the sun in cancer, uh, the cancer being cancer being ruled by the moon, you're understanding more about your own lunar needs and the lunar energies that we are meant to flow with, to allow to move through us, and also what that shows you about your own energy your own cycles of life, and how you are honoring your own inner world and emotional needs at this time. It also feels like this sun in Cancer and Mercury retrograde in Cancer energies are also harmonizing us to the flows of life on the planet, uh, opening us up to the feminine energies of moving through a process, of allowing something to unfold, of of trusting. And so there is an opportunity here over this next week to really honor your own feminine energies, regardless of your gender or sex, but really to tap into what feels right for you, what feels correct for you, where are you being drawn to something, where are you feeling that there's a resonance with something, with anything. Uh, There's an opportunity to tap into these parts of yourself and to honor them and to to trust what's coming up for you. Because the gifts of cancer is that it helps us to flow and to move through life experiences. Uh, There's a sense that, you know, nothing is forever. You know, there's, 
there's the understanding that there's a temporary feeling coming up. There's a temporary experience coming up. And so even when the emotions come up or when something feels really big or overwhelming, it's never permanent. It always is moving through us. And you can trust that in yourself. You can trust the change and you can trust it as part of your evolution and your soul growth. And that can help detach from anything that does feel too intensive or overwhelming. It can help you take some steps back and know that, okay, this is going to shift. This is going to change. I'm not going to be here forever. And that can be very soothing It can also be very nurturing. So look at how you can step away from anything that is too much and to honor it for what it's bringing you in the moment right now. So this is also part of that back and forth between the Cancer energies and the Capricorn energies. And I did want to talk a little bit more about these strong Capricorn energies uh, that are really in effect, you know, for most of 2020. And I also want to touch again on some of the messages that I shared with you in last Wednesday's show. Now that was on July 1st, where I have been seeing intuitively and energetically the energies of these eight masculine energies that I felt as very much a strong presence on the planet. Um, These energies felt like they are military. Uh, They are, uh, I call them high command. Um, They're an energy of strength, of protection. There's a protection element here. There's an energy of having a very clear mission to support humanity. And I'm still feeling this energy very strongly, and I feel it related to Pluto conjunct Jupiter energies. And what I've noticed since this lunar eclipse in Capricorn is how the energy has actually shifted. So what I've been seeing, uh, just a quick recap, is is these eight energies um, that all present themselves as masculine in nature and that I see them in the the military command uniforms. Um, I don't see them associated with a particular country. And it's interesting because this is not about politics. And that's something that came through as well. This is not a political issue, meaning this is not an energy that's supposed to be understood through a political lens. And that can be hard for some people to step away from because of how much the political messaging is coming through right now. And it's a big election year in the United States. But the energy I feel for them is is not about, you know, politics or anything in that way, because it's a higher energy. And politics are connected to different systems that divide us ultimately. And what these energies are doing is a unification. It's actually a unification energy. These, these eight, I'm going to call them gentlemen that I'm seeing. And so what I've noticed about them energetically is that their energy is very clear, uh, very much about the mission at hand, very much about what needs to be shifted and evolved for humanity. And their energy feels that it comes from other places, other dimensions, but they uh, chose to be in human form and to take a body to do this work. And so it's interesting that their energy also feels quite dense as humans, meaning they're very clear cut, you know, no bullshit. Like they're just very straight up what they need to do and what needs to get done. And what I'm seeing too in their energy field, um, I'm seeing this infinity sign. And the infinity sign is actually connecting the solar plexus to the heart chakra. And so it's an infinity sign between the heart and the heart center and the power center about the mission is to balance the planet's energies and to act from a place where it's a healthy power. It's a love for humanity. It's support for correct power structures. It's, it's a very clear, solid energy. And it's designed to remove what is no longer in residence with what the planet needs. So then as this energy has been coming through and it's been very strong, um, I, I just, I just see it a lot. I asked, of course, well, where's the feminine energy in this? Because we know that in order for things to be in balance and for them to be effective, that we need equal parts, masculine and feminine. So if these eight energies, these, these eight gentlemen are presenting themselves as masculine energies, I asked, well, where is the feminine energy, um, in this whole formula? 
And the answer I received was that the feminine energy is within you and within the planet. And what is happening is that these eight very solid energies are providing a structure that allows the divine feminine energies to rise in each of us and to rise in this very grand cycle on the planet, but to rise in safety, to rise with a field of protection, to rise in a way that it is trusted and secure. So there's this very interesting energy dynamic where the feminine energy is being given space to flow and to open. And these strong eight masculine energies are very clear in the work that they're here to do and what needs to shift on the planet while allowing room for us to rise in our feminine expressions and needs and to know these parts of ourselves in a safe way. Because there's been other cycles of energy on the planet where the feminine energy was abused, was killed, was not safe, was persecuted, um, on and on. And now this is part of a rising cycle where it's safe to be in the fullness of who we are and it's safe to trust this process. So the other thing that's come through very clearly is how part of this energy of these eight energies um, is very much about reestablishing what is best for the planet. And it does pertain to this ongoing battle between the light and the dark and how things have unfolded, especially through 2020 and what has been removed from the planet. And I did touch on this a few shows ago about a very dark, dense energies have been removed. And um, it's been, it was like a very heavy energy. I felt it as like a, a tar, like a very intense ingrained energy that has been removed and it has happened in a way um, that was about responsibility and karma and consequences um, and justice and, and justice. I also have felt that this is about a respect for a soul's choice and the roles that certain souls have played and the choices they've made. Um, I felt that some of these energies that were removed will never come back to this planet. Um, and I actually saw them dissolving into other forms and into other manners of energy. Um, and, and so part of what's been removed from the planet is due to the work of, of these eight energy fields uh, that I'm talking about. And what has also come through, and this is what's been very interesting too, is that this whole story of what's been happening on the planet, of what's been changing, is very much behind the scenes, very much um, you know, out of the public eye, not in the mainstream. You know, it's, it's an energetics thing that not everyone is going to see. And they're saying that the truth of what's been shifted on this planet probably won't come out for a while. And I'm hearing that some parts of the story won't come out for years, whereas other parts of the story may come out in the next year or two. And part of this is because of this energy of protection and the energy of security where these very wise beings understand that many humans wouldn't be able to mentally understand or grasp some of the dark things that have happened on the planet. And it would literally do a lot of damage to them mentally, emotionally, spiritually, if the masses knew the full spectrum of energies and the full story. So part of this divine masculine energy is honoring what is best for humanity, what is essential knowledge and what is not. Um, it's almost like now they're showing like all these documents, like let's say confidential stamped on top where there's reasons why things are not revealed. And there's reasons why that are actually for the best and highest good of all. So it's a very interesting 
energy of discretion and discernment, where there's a responsibility to maintain the energy on the planet by not revealing the full truth or the full story. And, you know, there's, there's many people who want everything to be said and revealed and to come out. And what I'm hearing is that that's probably not going to happen, at least not right away, because the shock waves it would cause on the planet, like the energetic imbalance that would happen would do more harm than good on the globe. And it would actually set people back in a way that isn't for the good of humanity either. So see, it's, it's very clear, like there's a very clear plan here of how to handle things, of how it needs to unfold, of what is best. And that's what I'm loving about this energy is how it truly is honoring the best for everyone involved. And that it's why it's not about politics and it's not about um, even business and, and government and corporations and, and work and all these energies that are shifting permanently. It's much bigger than that. And it really comes from a place of divine light and love for humanity. And so this feels very loving. It's very matter of fact, by the way, the energy um, I've described it as, you know, it's, it's a high command council. It's a high command uh, working for what is best for the planet. And there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. And we're being asked to understand the long-term view, very Capricorn. Uh, we're being asked to understand where we need to be trusting the process, where we need to be mature, where we need to take into consideration the ramifications that could happen or unfold and how it could really set off a lot of, um, they're showing me like energetic bombs for people, like, like meltdowns or, or shocks and just a lot of chaos. So they're saying that what we need to do is, <laughs> they're saying mind your business. It's kind of like, just take care of what's in front of you. Just understand that you're here at a very big time on the planet and to be very conscious of where you're giving your energy. And if you are looking to support what is changing on the planet, then simply visualize yourself, your solar plexus and your heart creating an infinity symbol together between those two chakras. And then that energy going out into a gorgeous field of light. And that's how you can support what is happening on the planet. You don't have to attach to any one, any thing, any political party, any government, any business. You don't have to take a stance. You, you, you don't have to do any of that at a human level, but you can energetically contribute to the light on the planet by doing this simple visualization. And as I talk about this, I'm also realizing that I will be doing a show for you next Monday talking more about some of these permanent shifts that are changing on the planet. And I'm going to talk about it in a very practical, grounded manner. And then I'll see what else comes through, through the channeling here. Um, the other thing that's transpired over this past week or so since the Capricorn lunar eclipse is that these eight energies um, that I was seeing basically like in a meeting, um, you know, gathered together and, and discussing and strategizing. Now what's happened is that the leader of the council is no longer sitting. He is standing up. And if you've ever been in a meeting, in a boardroom, in a conference room, when the leader of the meeting stands up, it means the talking is over. The time for discussion, for strategizing, for anything like that is over. And it's like this meeting is adjourned and the next work must unfold. So I see him standing up. And that's also been a shift that, okay, things have been decided. Gavels have come down. Like I'm seeing all these gavels and it's like justice and decisions and this is what's been ruled. Rulings have happened. A, a lot of things have taken place um, that are from this higher point of, of light. And it's very clear cut. I mean, there's, there's no messing around. It's like what's done is done. And that shows that there's going to be the next part of the mission that's going to come through and that's going to be the focus. So I have to tell you, I, I really actually am enjoying these messages and what's coming through. It's really fascinating to me. 
And the way that I work, um, because I know that some people are new and are new to this podcast, um, the, the way that I work is that I receive visuals and messages in very unexpected ways. And I, I have the clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairaudience, and they turn on and off. Um, I'm, they're not always on, you know, I don't go to the grocery store and it's on. I'm not always, you know, out in the world and it's on, but I get these messages and I get visuals. And for me, it's a bit like seeing a movie and seeing a film where the projector is from my third eye. And I know that many of you can relate to this and you can also develop it yourself. Um, it's something that has developed for me over many years. And what I do is just simply trust it because I don't know quote unquote, what it always means. My humanness doesn't know, but I see the images. I understand it has significance. It has meaning. And it might not be until hindsight that it becomes clear what exactly that visual is about. But I know that it's coming through strongly and that I meant to share it. And that's also something that I simply trust that it's the right time to share it. It's the right time to put this message out there. So I hope that this gives you energy that you need, understanding, something that helps with whatever you're going through right now, that the big cycles that are unfolding here, they're, they're bigger than any one of us. And it's very exciting to be here on the planet at this time, but to not think that you have to do or control through, they're saying through opinions. We don't have to get overly attached to our opinions because those are also shifting energy. It's, v- it's very interesting. Like they're showing me that this is a, there's a very solid band of light, very clear white light, and that opinions can vary in how they connect with that light and that opinions are part of a human interpretation based on our experiences, based on our knowledge, our belief systems, you know, think of everything that creates our opinions. They're saying it's stepping back from opinions and just focusing on an overarching experience of light. It's this dynamic between our humanness and our spiritual selves right? It's like this back and forth of, well, I have an opinion about this. I have my thoughts about this. And the more that we step away from that and we just be in that place of pure energy potentials and and pure sense of what needs to happen, there's better things that unfold as a result. So perhaps something to think about. And I realize it's interesting thing to bring up uh, during a, a big election season in the United States. Uh, but it's, it's good to remember that we are not our opinions. In fact, we are not even our experiences. We are the energies of everything. And to be mindful of where you put your energy or where you focus, where you focus your energy. So I hope this is connecting. Um, It's a very interesting energy throughout July. And again, the the pacing ourselves is what matters. Uh, Mercury is going to station retrograde on July 12th. And that will be happening in the early morning hours, uh, 4.26 a.m. That's Eastern Daylight Savings Time. And that will be at 5 degrees of Cancer. And it's going to go forward. And I feel like when this Mercury stations direct, it's going to flush, flush out some things. Again, going back to that image of a washing machine, it's like, okay, finally the, the washing machine gets flushed out. It's been on, it's going to drain. The energy is going to drain. So that's going to be a turning point. And then also at the same time, we're going to see Chiron station retrograde at nine degrees of Aries. And I'm actually a fan of Chiron retrograde because I see it as an opportunity to tune in to yourself and to tune in to the messages inside of you that are right there. And again, it goes back to listening to your heart and to the rhythm of the heart, the beating of your heart, you know, the messages of the heart. This Chiron retrograde is going to reconnect us to what is within us uh, that we didn't notice before or we didn't hear before. So that also feels like a very supportive energy. And it could be that there's something that you 
hear and you click with in a whole new way because of that Chiron stationing retrograde. I just did a show for you on Monday, that was July 6th, about transiting Mars in Aries and transiting Chiron in Aries and how these two energies are working with us right now, especially through the body especially through moving energies through us. So uh, please listen to that podcast if you haven't already, or if you are resonating with the potentials of what these energies are bringing up for you. Now, the other thing that's happening on July 12th is that the sun in Cancer is going to trine Neptune in Pisces at 20 degrees. This is a very beautiful energy. This is an opening, a flowing, a sense of connection as well. Um, there could be something that comes through that really gives you a sense of peace, that gives you a higher understanding and a higher perspective. A uh, Neptune in Pisces is our higher selves that are traveling with us right now. Our higher selves that are supporting us, that are bringing in the intuition, the spiritual guidance, um, anything that you need that is showing you how everything is temporary and how you don't have to be attached to anything. So one of the gifts of Neptune and Pisces is that we step out of our ego. We step away from what we really want or who we think we are, and we open up to the vastness of our energy. And it can be a really beautiful experience to just feel like you don't have to cling on to something or you don't have to hold expectations about that one thing or that one area of your life. It's these bigger, grander lessons in trusting. So when the sun in Cancer trines Neptune and Pisces at 20 degrees, there's an opportunity here to bring in these, these flows of energy that support you. And I'm seeing this energy actually going into the heart, uh, that heart chakra. And you could feel a surge of something within you, a surge of understanding, a surge of trusting, a surge of feeling at peace. Again, this is happening on July 12th. That's when it's exact, but you could feel it over the whole weekend. So just know that we are supported at this time and it is important to connect with these energies when we can because as I mentioned, um, starting in the next week, we're going to see the sun in Cancer opposing Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn all in Capricorn. And that's where there's going to be some tests. And I'll talk about that next Wednesday, but just to give you a heads up, the more you can be in this place of knowing that you have what you need, trusting your own energy, tuning in to your intuition, understanding the messages of your body, all of these energy systems are available to us. And the more that we trust them, we tap into flowing with life and it can help us move through any struggles or challenges that are showing up in the short term. I also want to briefly touch on Venus and Gemini. She is still in her shadow zone. She's at nine degrees of Gemini as I do this show, and she's making a sextile to Chiron in Aries. And she's also working nicely with Mars in Aries. So there is a sense of, you know, things can come through that are the right idea, the right next steps, the right projects, feeling inspired could be strong right now. And Venus is still helping us sort out, you know, what we know we want. And that sense of this is truly correct for me now. And even understanding some of the deeper stories that we've told ourselves. And that's because Gemini is the storyteller. And so Venus in Gemini has been asking us to look at the stories that have been in our hearts, the stories that we've held around love, receiving, connection, uh, friendships, the people that we associate with, uh, our siblings, you know, how we go about our daily lives and helping us restructure that in a way that is now accurate for us. So Venus is going to leave her shadow at the end of July, July 29th, and that's when she gets to 21 degrees of Gemini. So she's going to have one more square to that Neptune in Pisces at 20 degrees. That will happen July 27th. Uh, but until then, what we're understanding is that pay attention to how you want to spend your, day, your days. Pay attention to what this Venus in Gemini is showing you about the stories in your head, the ideas, uh, the things that you're doing, what feels right for you, what is what is correct for you on a daily basis. 
Perhaps she's been helping you establish a new daily routine for yourself. Perhaps this Venus in Gemini is helping you see where your energy goes every day and if that is how you want to spend your time. So make the most of that because she is helping us really get clear on how we spend our days. And I think that this has been a very interesting Venus and Gemini cycle, uh, especially when you relate it to COVID and how much our daily lives have changed. And so what do you do now to feel good about yourself or to feel good about your life uh, when the activities or things that you used to do are shut down or no longer available? So one of the best ways you can make the most of this energy right now is to take advantage of where your energy needs to be cared for, of understanding the messages from your body, of giving yourself time and space uh, to not do anything, to give yourself a break. It's been a very big year. It's been a very stressful year with a whole new set of challenges. And you are made to keep going. You are here to go forward on your journey, knowing that you will have solutions that will show up. You will have support. The resources are meant to come through, but we're moving through a churning cycle where it can feel like a lot has fallen away and been removed. But part of the energetics of the planet is replenishment. There's always something new that comes forward or comes in. And so being in these in-between periods can really test us, but to trust who you are now, look at how far you've come. Look at what you have moved through, what you've healed, what you've learned, how you've grown. There's an energy here of really acknowledging how far you have moved through this lifetime that actually could be an acceleration across multiple lifetimes. And it can feel like you've lived multiple lifetimes in the past you know, 50 years. Um, and that's just part of the gifts of this time as well, is that our consciousness is rising exponentially. The, el- the energies are accelerating. And there's this fast moving energy that's helping us get to the new shore, the new landing place. And yes, it's a little stormy as we go through. There's big winds, there's high tides, there's a lot churning. Um, it can be hard to feel stable. But what I'm sensing here is that we are, never travel alone. We always travel with support and we always travel with a strength that is unwavering. So know that what is happening in 2020 is big and that we are all participating in it and we're all contributing to it and it's going to pay off because we are rising in our own light. We are really amplifying what we want in our lives. And it's coming from this whole new energy field that the earth hasn't tapped into before. So this part of this excitement too, it's like this buzziness that I'm feeling around how what we're moving through, it's not a fast process, but it's a worthwhile process. It is going to be worth it. It's going to have the rewards and the beautiful manifestations. So stay strong, stay strong in yourself mentally, Uh, Stay strong in yourself physically, energetically, spiritually, and also give yourself what you need right now to keep navigating through these very big and dynamic energy shifts. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I appreciate your presence, time, and energy. I hope that at least one message in this show supports you and resonates with you and that you also feel connected to the bigger cycles that are unfolding on the planet now. You can find out more about me over at mollymccord.online. That's where you'll find all of my latest astrology programs and courses. And then I have my author website at consciouscoolchic.com where you can find out more about my 12 books, audiobooks, spiritual topics, and consciousness teachings. Thank you for joining me. I'll be back on Monday with another episode. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful week ahead and I hope that the shifts and changes that are coming on July 12th support you as well. I'll see you back here soon and thank you so much.